Good morning, everyone. I believe the Lord wants me to do this video on a dream that I had. He gave me uh, this dream on June 13th. I'm going to share the dream with you, and I'm going to read the scripture that he gave me that goes along with this dream. And I encourage you to take this to the Lord. I'm not going to comment myself. I believe it's self-explanatory. Um, so here I go. In the dream, I walked into a bedroom where there were two big beds, and women were sitting on them. It reminded me of a child's pajama party. They were giggling and chattering. They did not pay any attention to me when I came into the room, and I felt like an outsider. I was very serious and sober-minded, and I asked them if I could have a piece of cake. It was my understanding that it was a piece of wedding cake I was asking for. There was only one woman in the group who even looked at me, and she looked at me as if I were in the way or bothering her. She told me they had eaten all the cake and there was none left for me. I felt very sad uh, because they didn't even care that there was no cake for me. Then a woman walked up behind me and she whispered into my ear and she said, you can have a piece of my father's cake. So I followed her into a large kitchen where we walked over to a large uh, commercial refrigerator with the big double doors. And she opened the door and the refrigerator was full of food. It was just packed. But I saw on a shelf uh, some cake and it was chocolate and there were three different cakes. And I was trying to decide which cake I wanted, and um, the top cake had nuts in it. And so I decided I was going to choose that one because I love nuts, and especially in brownies or chocolate cake. And that was the end of the dream. So I asked the Lord to give me scripture verses to confirm what I felt this dream meant. And he gave me Numbers 32. Now I'm going to read out of this translation. It's the one that I had near me when I got this dream. And I know people argue about which Bible to read and which version to read. And I can tell you that God has used all different kinds of translations to speak to me. I probably have 10 different translations that I go to. And sometimes the Lord will give me uh, uh, scriptures out of a certain translation that if I had read it in another translation, I would not have understood what he was saying to me. So um, this is the one I'm going to read out of. It's uh, very clear, I believe, what the meaning is. Now the Reubenites and Gadites had a very large number of livestock. Noticing that the land of Jazer and of Gilead was grazing country, they came to Moses and the priest Eleazar and to the princes of the community and said, The region of Atro At Ataroth, Deban, Jazer, Nimrah, Heshbon, Elila, Sebum, Nebo, and Baal, Meon, which the Lord has laid low before the community of Israel, is grazing country. Now, since your servants have livestock, they continued, if we find favor with you, let this land be given to your servants as their property. Do not make us cross the Jordan. But Moses answered the Gadites and Reubenites, are your kinsmen then to engage in war while you remain here? Why do you wish to discourage the Israelites from crossing to the land the Lord has given them? That is just what your fathers did when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to recointer the land. They went up to the Wadi Eshkol and recointered the land. Then so discouraged the Israelites that they would not enter the land the Lord had given them. At that time the wrath of the Lord flared up and he swore, because they have not followed me unreservedly, none of these men of twenty years or more who have come up from Egypt shall ever see this country I promised under oath to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, except the Canaanite Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun, who have followed the Lord unreservedly. So in his anger with the Israelites, the Lord made them wander in the desert forty years, 
until the whole generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord had died out. And now here you are, a brood of sinners, rising up in your father's place to add still more to the Lord's blazing wrath against the Israelites. If you turn away from following him, he will make them stay longer in the desert, and so you will bring about the ruin of this whole nation. But they were insistent with him. We wish only to build sheepfolds here for our flocks and towns for our families, but we ourselves will march as troops in the van of the Israelites until we have led them to their destination. Meanwhile, our families can remain here in the fortified towns, safe from attack by the natives. We will not return to our homes until every one of the Israelites has taken possession of his inheritance and will not claim any heritage with them once we cross the Jordan, so long as we receive a heritage for ourselves in this eastern side of the Jordan. Moses said to them in reply, If you keep your word to march as troops in the Lord's vanguard and to cross the Jordan in full force before the Lord until he has driven his enemies out of his way, and the land is subdued before him, then you may return here, quit of every obligation to the Lord and to Israel, and this region shall be your possession before the Lord. But if you do not do this, you will sin against the Lord, and you can be sure that you will not escape the consequences of your sin. So that is the scripture the Lord had given me. Uh, again, I encourage you to take this to the Lord and seek the meaning on this um, this dream and the scripture. I know it goes together. So God bless you guys, and I will talk to you later. Bye.